Are you looking to quit your job without the risk? Then you are gonna love this episode of Biz and Booze because I will be taking you through some significant yet very simple steps that you can take in order to leverage the skills and the knowledge that you already have in order to go off on your own and finally get the freedom to do work on your own terms. Ready for this? Grab a drink. It's time to think. I'm Laura Marks, and this is Biz and Booze, a weekly happy hour to help women across the globe start and grow their dream businesses. So if you're into that kind of thing, drinking while you're thinking, then I'd love for you to subscribe so that you can join our fun-loving bunch of female entrepreneurs every single week at happy hour. Has the roller coaster of the last couple years made you completely rethink your career or the role work plays in your life? If so, you are most definitely not alone. 2021 actually marks the biggest mass exodus from jobs with more than 40% of the global workforce considering leaving their employers this year. This movement has been dubbed the Great resignation. And I wholeheartedly believe that the biggest reason for this is how the pandemic has given us a new perspective on our lives. Like YOLO, life is way too short to work my butt off at a company that doesn't value me, to live my life according to someone else's schedule and terms, and to be held back from achieving my own goals and aspirations. And although we've been put through hell, these last couple of years, the silver lining is it's kind of jolted us awake in a way, allowing us to see our value, the value of our lives, and fueled us to pursue something better and more fulfilling in our lives. Some have been triggered so much, they just say, fuck it, and they jump with a blind faith that they'll land on their feet to kind of I'll figure it out mentality. While on the other side of the spectrum, people are holding on for dear life, waiting for the safety net to appear waiting to get some kind of reassurance that if they leave, it'll be worth it. They'll be okay. Regardless of where you fall on this spectrum, the feelings are the same. You want something more. But if more flexibility and freedom is what you're immediately seeking, then achieving that is actually much closer than you think, regardless about how you feel about your current job. It may be a huge help in getting you to where you want to go because for better or for worse, it's been a huge part of your life and the experience and the knowledge that you've gained and your overall line of sight into the inner workings of your particular role, of your particular industry, may be the kicking off point that you need as your own boss. So if that's you, then in this episode, I will be taking you through how to take some simple but significant steps forward to pursue something better, to take the skills that you already have, the skills that you've developed, and the knowledge that you've gained from your years as an employee, and use them to do your own thing, to make money as your own boss without the risk and without finding yourself putting in more work than you bargained for, because you don't want that either. So your first step to use your job to go off on your own is to, number one, take inventory of the skills that you've acquired. There are skills that you've gained from your job that are invaluable. So even if you don't love what you do, it would be a huge mistake to dismiss what you've gained from it because you can leverage these skills as A, a stepping stone to get you closer to doing what it is you do wanna do, and or B, apply these skills in a different way or in a different industry that you would get a lot more fulfillment out of. So with that, think about everything that you do on a daily or weekly basis, from planning out projects, dealing with customers, managing a team, working a particular software, delivering presentations, creating content, organizing schedules, identifying new ideas, writing reports, Uh, Like what, let's see what else, designing materials, uh, researching new opportunities, balancing books, you name it. Get a comprehensive list going. To do this, it will require that you analyze all of your tasks and activities in your job. Jot all of these down and circle the ones that you're the strongest at and the ones you enjoy the most. What comes the easiest to you? What are things that you can do quickly? Which do you tend to get lost in? What are like 
things that you do that nobody else can do. And if you left, they'd be like, uh, what the fuck are we going to do without her? Those are the ones where the most opportunity lies to leverage, to grow a business out of. Once you've got a strong list of skills that you've acquired, step number two is to identify what insider knowledge you have gained. There are likely things that you are knowledgeable about or have insider information around from your current role that you may completely take for granted, like the operations of a particular department, the processes around a particular task or activity, the details around a product or service, the information behind a niche industry, you name it. You want to think about what you know well that others who haven't been in your shoes are clueless about and write all of those things down. Your next step is to brainstorm ways to monetize that skill and knowledge that you've gained. Essentially, you're going to want to identify how you can and how you want to package up and sell these things and ultimately form a business around them. And in order to do this, you first need to understand the different types of business models. A business model is essentially the way in which you structure a business in order to monetize it, in order to make money. So Taking a look at the different types of business models, there are about a hundred thousands of different ways that you can slice and dice these things. If you Google types of business models, you will be very overwhelmed and confused. But my goal as always is to simplify this for you. So what I've done is I've broken this down into six main buckets, personal service, consulting, digital product, digital tool, physical product, and a brokerage. In other words, you are selling your expertise So you're doing something for someone. You're selling your knowledge. So you're teaching someone how to do something. Pay close attention to those two because that's likely what you're going to roll into from this exercise. Selling a knowledge-based product. So creating something that teaches someone how to do something. Selling a tool. So creating something that facilitates or automates a process for somebody. Selling a product, so creating something for someone to have and to hold, or maybe not hold if it's really large, but you know, a physical product, you know what I'm talking about. And selling someone else's offer, so recommending something to someone. Easy peasy, am I right? So for example, say you're a social media manager at your current job, which is for a company in the landscaping industry. You could take that social media expertise, the skills that you've gained in building those strategies and executing against them and working with clients and the specific knowledge that you've gained in in the landscaping space in order to pursue one of these business models. So let me break this down, this specific example down for each business model so you can see how many options you got. You could do freelance social media work for landscaping companies where you manage and run all of their social media efforts or a niche aspect of their social media, like follower growth or content creation or planning or a specific channel like TikTok or Instagram. You could start a social media agency where you have potentially an intern and a designer on board to do this with you. And as you work to grow your client base, you can grow your team. You could teach clients your methods that they or their team could execute against or potentially a hybrid of this where you handle some of the work and then give them trainings or tools or processes to help them in executing other areas of it on their own. Kind of like a corporate training gig. You could teach agencies how to land new social media clients. You could teach others who are interested in starting a career in social media what you've learned as you've climbed the ranks in your own career, giving them the skills that they need to land a job or to elevate their skills in order to quickly get promoted. You could run a virtual workshop for groups of people all together versus one-on-one, either clients you teach your methods to or those interested in pursuing social media as a career. You can create an online course that people take on their own in order to learn how to run their own social media or build a social media career or some kind of hybrid course and consulting offer where you deliver a course, but also offer group or one-on-one consulting to support them in achieving their particular goal and therefore making some more money on the side. You could partner up with a designer or a programmer to build a piece of software or app related to your experience. You could create a physical product of your own, complementary to the industry that you're in or the expertise that you've grown or a need that you've identified through the work that you've done, either something homemade or handmade or made through a manufacturer, whatever. And lastly, 
you can sell other people's products or services and get paid to post about them or commission on the items that you sell through a blog that you start or by starting your own social media channel and working your way up as an influencer. Do you see the possibilities? Do you see all of the ways that you can take your expertise or knowledge in order to make money on your own outside of your employer? Like, that is insane how many options you have. And once you realize that, you're like, Poof! like your mind just goes crazy with all the possibilities and you're like, let's make this happen. Bonus tip, in addition to thinking about what you're good at and what you know, you also may wanna start thinking about the gaps in your space. What's difficult to do that shouldn't be as a part of your job? What's a gap that you could fill? What's something that frustrates or was frustrating for you at one point that you think could be fixed for others? But how cool that you have all of these options. I wanted to rattle all of these off, not to like overwhelm you, but so that you realize there is no shortage of ways that you can make money on your own, regardless if you've never done it before, especially in the virtual age that we are all in that has been thrusted forward from the pandemic. So many things are done remotely that weren't done remotely before. And the proximity to clients and customers are often completely irrelevant in most cases. Opening up a whole group of clients and customers that are not around you, depending on what type of business model that you choose, giving you way more opportunities to niche down and make sales. This can apply to so many types of professions or even a specific skill set or knowledge that you have as a part of your profession, like accounting, design, cooking, childcare, sleep training, nursing, sales, recruiting, health and wellness, beauty, customer service. Like honestly, the list goes on and on. All right, we're not done yet. You've identified your skill sets. You've identified your knowledge from your job and ways that you can I'm like, which number are we on? And ways that you can leverage that to make money on your own. Your next step is to narrow in on the direction you want to go. Just like different areas of business require different strengths and skill sets, so do different business models. For instance, the skill set to start a blog and make money recommending other people's products or services is a lot different than if you were running your own agency. That being said, Here is what I recommend to people who are just starting out. The best place to start is with a personal service. So using your skills and expertise from your current job to do work for others. The reason this is the best place to start is because it's the quickest. You don't have the lead time of like building a team or creating an online course or making a product. You can just get started. And it's the easiest. You can make a lot of money without needing a lot of clients. For example, if you're selling an online course for let's say $500, you'll need a lot of customers to hit your revenue goals. So say you wanna make $50,000, we got some simple math going. That will require that you sell 100, 100 of your courses. In order to sell 100 of something, you need to get a marketing system in place to do this. But if you make $5,000 $5,000 off of a single client that you do work for, you only need 10 clients to make $50,000 versus the 100 clients for an online course. So you can likely get most of those clients through word of mouth or through your network of coworkers or ex-classmates or friends or family without an elaborate marketing strategy. That all being said, you gotta follow your heart. So if you wanna start an online course, go on with your bad self, girl. If you want to start with a blog or as an influencer, again, 100% doable. Regardless of what you choose, starting with a personal service is just what I recommend because it's the easiest and the quickest, but it is not the best route for everyone if you have your heart set on something else. But regardless of what you choose, your next step is the same. Step number five. Get the blueprint to make it happen. The last thing you wanna do is try to navigate this on your own, on top of your already full-time job and likely your other full-time job as a mom. You'll end up wasting a lot of time and money trying to figure things out, doing things you don't need to do, doing things the hard way, and doing things the wrong way. You want the blueprint, the step-by-step roadmap to take what you know and love or an idea you may already have coming out of this episode and turn it into a profitable business of your own in just 90 days. Here's the thing. 
entrepreneurship as we know it and the approach the vast majority of people take to start a business is not set up for us to succeed. I've created a system that allows you to get to where you want to be in 90 days by just dedicating one hour a day, which is insane because the traditional way people approach starting a business is a full-time job. And this is the system I teach in a brand new free training I made for you guys, which you can access for free at mybizfreetraining.com. With this system, starting your own thing is so simple. Not only that, it takes the risk out of making this leap. You'll not only walk away with the blueprint for your success coming out of this free training, You'll know the biggest mistakes that are likely to trip you up as an entrepreneur and what you should do instead in order to succeed. You'll gain access to the top ways that you can make money as a business, regardless of what kind of experience you're coming into this with. And you'll get the only marketing strategy that you need in order to build your business to six figures. No hustling your buns off or posting to social media every day. You can access all of this for free at mybizfreetraining.com. So I hope to see you inside the free training and I hope to see you in next week's episode of Biz and Booze. Bye.